Let's get now to another very important story that we have been talking about behind the scenes mm -hmm. and impacting so many young people in our community, that deadly daycare tragedy we've been talking about out of the Bronx. It exposes a very disturbing, growing yeah. problem, yeah. the fentanyl crisis in this country, and more and more children. These numbers are so disturbing, more children being poisoned. Listen to this. They were running a drug operation from a daycare center, a daycare center, a place where children should be kept safe, not surrounded by a drug that could kill them in an instant. We have to carry around Narcan to <clears throat> prevent our children from overdosing. I mean, if that is not a, an indictment on our society, how far we've gone from who we should be. Fentanyl is a killer. Fentanyl crept into our illicit drug supply like a cancer, slowly and deceptively, and is now in everything and everywhere, killing victims instantly and indiscriminately. Fentanyl is the most urgent threat in our nation. And the tragedy that unfolded in the Bronx at the Danino Nino Daycare Center demonstrates the danger that fentanyl poses to every New Yorker. Look at that sweet face, and you have every right to be angry. Now look at these numbers. Fatal opioid poisonings of babies and children. We're talking about children, babies. They're up 308% nationwide between 2018 and 2021. And you know what's crushing is you think about those numbers, but you think about each one of those numbers represents a family. Yeah, yeah. That absolutely. Are, that have been changed forever. And, and this fentanyl has been around for a while, but right now it is just killing so many people at an alarming rate. One is too many, and we've seen way more than that. Let's bring in the doctor now to get the medical side of this. Dr. Jacob Bartnick, the director of the emergency department at St. Barnabas. Doctor, thanks for joining us. I want to jump right in because, you know, we've talked about fentanyl before, but in the past decade, this has just really become an emergency across the country. What is it about this fentanyl that makes it so deadly? I mean, the thing about fentanyl is it's very, very potent, much more potent, potent than the heroin um, that we saw in the streets for a long time. Really, in the past three years or so, we've seen, we, we assume as emergency physicians that op opioid overdoses that come into our emergency department have fentanyl in them. So, you know, when we hear the headlines and, and you know, adult drug use is one thing, but we, when we start talking about children involved in this, how in, in our families does fentanyl how can it how can it touch children? What are the ways that that it can be a part of a child's life? Right. So, I mean, it's tragic that we have to talk about this, um, but, you know, ingestion is really the main source of overdose for children, mm -hmm. especially children like this toddlers um, really horrific. They are curious. They crawl around. They put their hands in their mouth. They pick up pills. They pick up powders. Um, so really limiting access to not just illicit drugs, um, prescription opioids as well. Um, limiting access is one of the main ways we can prevent these tragedies. So you said ingestion, right? Um, and we talked about just that two milligrams, just which equates to about 10 to 15 grains of salt. salt. Um, could be deadly, right? Um, and we're talking about these children. We don't know exactly how they came in contact with it to cause this overdose. But in the complaint, doctor, um, they said that they found um, one kilo of fentanyl in this closet and some other drug paraphernalia um, to, to weigh the drugs. And then they found the children's mats located underneath, right? Um, and then those children were apparently sleeping on those mats. Could it have been a case of, of just that close contact, breathing it in, or are you saying that it had to have been some kind of ingestion? Well, I guess, you know, we won't know for certain. Um, if, if the fentanyl was so close, the powder was so close to those mats, I'm sure there was some residue on those mats. Um, that could certainly be a plausible way uh, I'm sure we'll hear a little bit more a little bit more when investigators find out a little bit more. Um, it's pretty, pretty unlikely to just have an aerosolize in the air and ingestion in that way. Uh, but yeah, ingestion by touching some residue certainly is the amount you described, the tiny doses that are necessary to to hurt children. Uh, it's certainly plausible. Doc, before we go, and if you assume or if you think that your child is has had had contact, what are the only options? What are the options in, in fixing this situation and getting a healthy child? 
Well, so first recognizing the overdose, right? So if, if a child was acting normally and all of a sudden they're breathing funny, they're asleep, you can't wake them up, you're shaking them, you can't wake them up, uh, they're starting to turn, turn blue, that could be a potential overdose. And one of the main ways that actually the, really the only way that opioids kill is by stopping breathing. And so, you know, breathing for the child, learning basic CPR is key, carrying naloxone. I saw Mayor Adams had um, one of these kits that we actually supply in the emergency okay. room mm -hmm. for patients that are at risk. These are Narcan naloxone kits. Um, you know, this having this handy, this can be used on kids, two adults, and uh, very easy to use, and that could really ch save a child's life. Doctor, we only have 20 seconds, but Shirlene and I were talking about it on the set earlier, and Sam, we all want to know this question. You know, the three other children who were treated at the hospital and survived this exposure, will they face long-term effects from this fentanyl exposure? Right, so I don't know the details of those cases. Um, if the children were intervened on in an appropriate time and, and you know, paramedics and then the hospital staff were able to breathe for them and sort of breathe, breathe through that period of time that the fentanyl, which is usually only about an hour, uh, is having the effect, then they should have no long-term effects. If they did not have enough oxygen um, or, you know, we're sicker than we realized, then, then it's possible they have long-term effects. Oh, that gives us hope. Yeah. Because you see those little babies, the ones that did survive, you worry for them, you know, what this could what, what this could, um, how future, it could impact right. them. So. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Bartnick, Director of Emergency Department at St. Bartimus, uh, I you. appreciate you coming on. I know it's such a, a heavy topic, mm. but it's certainly something that has a lot of people's attention as it should. Doctor, thank you. Yeah, and just because it upsets us doesn't mean we're not going to keep talking about it because I think it's important.